Hi everyone, welcome back to L Dubs Investing. In this video, we are talking about the stock market today, guys. We're actually talking about what is an ETF, how to get involved, how does it work, what does it mean, everything in between, guys. Stay tuned. Alrighty, welcome back to L Dubs Investing. Please don't forget, guys, smash that like button if you want more videos on stock investing. Like and subscribe, it's absolutely free. Let's jump in. Okay, having a look at the overall sector today, we have definitely a turnaround day today. Mostly everything in the green to dark green today. Technology looks like they led the way along with communications. We have Tesla almost 5% up for yesterday. Financial services, energy, consumer defense. Looks like it was all around a good day yesterday. Let's jump in to what is an ETF and let's get into it. Okay, what is an ETF? Want the ease of stock trading, but diversification benefits of mutual funds. Take a look at exchange traded funds, ETF, which combine the best of both. Exchange traded funds are a type of investment fund that offer the best attributes of two popular assets. They have the diversification benefits of mutual funds while me picking the ease of which stocks are traded. Exchange traded funds definition. An exchange traded fund or ETF is a fund that can be traded on an exchange like a stock, meaning it can be bought and sold throughout the day. ETFs often have the lower fees and other types of funds depending on the type. ETFs have a variety of levels of risks. But like any financial products, ETFs aren't a one-size-fits-all solution. Evaluate them on their own merits, including management costs and commission fees, if there's any. How easily can I buy, sell them, and easy? and their investment quality. How does an ETF work? An ETF works like this. The fund provider owns the underlying assets, designs a fund to track the performance, and then sells the shares in that funds to investors. Stakeholders own a portion of an ETF, but they don't own the underlying asset in the fund. Even so, investors in an ETF that track a stock index may get lump dividend payments or reinvestments for the stock that make up the index. While ETFs are designed to track the value of an underlying asset or index, being a commonly like gold or basket of stocks such as the S&P 500, they trade at the market determination price of the usual defer from the asset. What more because of this, like extensions, long-term returns for an ETF will vary for those in the underlying assets. Here is the abbreviated version of how an ETF works. An ETF provider considers the universe of assets including stocks bonds commodities or currencies and creates a basket of them with a unique ticker investors can buy a share of that basket just like buying shares of a company buyers and sellers trade the etf throughout the day on an exchange much like stocks so basically it you know an etf is a compromising of either a sector a certain stock um, it could be energy, it could be commodities, it could be gold, it could be silver, and you know, eventually we will have a look at cryptos. ETF v mutual funds. Generally speaking, ETF have lower fees than mutual funds, and this is a big part of their appeal. In 2019, the average annual administration expenses, also called an expense ratio, for equity mutual funds was 0.52%. The average index equ equity ETF expense ratio was 0.18%. That might not seem a lot, guys, but when you're talking considerable amount of money, you're talking 0.2%, you know, could be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings. ETFs also offer tax-effective advantages to investors. They're generally more turnover within a mutual fund, especially those that are actively managed related to an ETF, and such buying and selling can result in capital gains. Similarly, when investors go to sell a mutual fund, the manager will need to raise cash by selling securities, which also can acute capital gains. In either scenario, Scenario, investors will be on the hook for those taxes. ETFs are increasingly popular, but the number of available mutual funds is still higher. The two products also have different managed structures, especially active mutual funds. Passive for ETFs, though actively managed ETFs do exist. <laughs> 
ETFs versus stocks. Like stocks, ETFs can be traded on exchanges and have unique ticker symbols that let you track their price activity. Unlike stocks, which represent just one company, ETFs represent a basket of stocks. Since ETFs include multiple assets, they may provide better diversification than a single stock. That diversification can help reduce your portfolio exposure to risk. ETFs are sometimes focused around certain sectors or themes. For example, SPY is one of the ETFs that track the S&P 500 and that are fun ones like Hack for a cybersecurity fund and Phone for an ETF focused on smartphones. ETF pros and cons. According to ETF.com, a subsidiary of Chicago-based operation exchange, 507 billion flowed into US listed ETFs in 2020. The number is up 55% from the inflows into ETFs in 2019. Investors are flocking to ETFs because of their simplicity, relative cheapness, and access to diversified portfolio. Pros of an ETF investment. Diversification. While it's easy to think of diversification in the sense of a broad market verticals, Stock bonds or particular commodities, for example, ETFs are also let investors diversify across horizontals, like industries. It would take a lot of money and effort to buy all the companies of a particular basket, but with the click of a button, an ETF delivers those benefits to your portfolio. Transparency. Anyone with internet access can search for a price actively for a particular ETF on an exchange. In addition, a fund's holdings are disclosed each day to the public, whereas it happens monthly or quarterly with mutual funds. Tax benefits. Investors typically are taxed only upon selling the investment, whereas mutual funds incur such border over the course of the investment. Cons of an ETF. Trading cost. ETFs cost may not end with the expense ratio because ETFs are exchange traded. They may be subject to commission fees from online brokers. Many brokers have decided to drop their ETF commissions to zero, but not all have. Potential liquidity issues. As with any security, you'll be within the content market prices when it comes to buy and sell, but ETFs aren't traded as frequently and can be harder to unload. Risk of the ETF will close. The primary reason this happens is that a fund hasn't bought enough assets to cover administration costs. The biggest inconvenience or the shutter ETF is that investors may sell sooner than they may intend and possible at loss. They're also the annoyance of having to reinvest that money and potential for an expected tax burden. How to find the right ETFs for your portfolio. It's important to be aware that while since generating generally are costs generally are lower for ETFs, they also can vary widely from fund to fund, depending on the user or well complexity and its demand. Even ETFs tracking the same index have different costs. Most ETFs are passively managed investments that simply track an index. Some investors prefer a hands-on approach of, of mutual funds, which are run by a professional manager who tries to outperform the market. There are actively managed ETFs that mimic mutual funds, but they come with higher fees. So consider your investment style before buying. The explosion of this market also has some funds come to the market that may not stuck up to merit. Borderline gimmicky funds that take a thin slice of the investor's world and may not provide much diversification. Just because an ETF is cheap doesn't necessarily mean it fits with the broader investment thesis. Five types of ETFs, stock ETFs dominate the market. ETFs may trade like stocks, but under the hood, they are more resemble mutual funds and index funds, which can vary greatly in terms of their underlying assets and investment goals. Below are a few common types of ETFs. Just note these are categorized are mutual exclusive. For example, a stock ETF might also be index bakes and vice versa. These ETFs aren't categorized by managed types, passive or active, but rather by the types of investments held within the ETF. So, stock ETFs. These comprised stocks are usually meant for long-term growth while typically less risky than individual stocks. They carry slightly more risk than some of other listed here, such as bond ETFs. Commodity ETFs. Commodities are raw goods that can be bought or sold, such as gold, coffee, and crude oil. Commodity ETFs let you bundle these securities into a single investment with commodity ETFs. It's essentially important to know what's inside them. Do you have your ownership in funds, physical stockpile or commodity or own equity in companies that produce, transport and store these goods? Does the ETF contain 
future contracts? Is the commodity considered a collectible? Is the eyes of the IRS? These factors come into some serious tax implications and varying risk levels. Bond ETFs. Unlike individual bonds, bond ETFs don't have a maturity date. So the most common use of them is to generate regular cash payable to the investor. These payments come from an interest generated by individual bonds within the fund. Bond ETFs can be excellent lower risk complement to stock ETFs. International ETFs. Foreign stocks are widely recommended for building a diverse portfolio along within US stocks and bonds. International ETFs are an easy and typically less risky way to find these foreign investments. These ETFs may include investments in individual countries or specific country blocks. Sector ETFs. The US stock market is divided into 11 sectors and each is made up of companies that operate within the sector. Sector ETFs provide a way to invest in specific companies within that sector, such as healthcare, financial, industry sector. These are be especially useful to investors tracking business cycles as some sectors tend to perform better during expansion periods. Others better during contracted periods. Often these typically carry higher risk than broad market ETFs. Sector ETFs can give the portfolio exposure to an industry that in intrigues you such as gold ETFs or marijuana ETFs with less risk than investing in a single company. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope that really gets into some details about what an ETF is, how it can affect you, how the benefits, what the pros and the cons are of buying ETFs and sector ETF guys. What Warren Buffett does say is just buy the spy ETF guys. You know, that is the, what the, you know, what the genius says to do, but hey, it is something that you can have a look at. And now you guys are fully informed. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Please don't forget, smash that like button. If you like this content, don't forget, like and subscribe, guys. It's absolutely free. Speaking of free, you want to check out the pinned comment to get yourself some free Bitcoin to Coinbase and, of course, CoinSpot, guys. And you want to get yourself a free stock to start your portfolio off, check out the pinned comment to stake. And I'll see you next time.